Yo, what's up? I'll buy to you. Yeah, today I thought we'd do something a little bit different. We're actually gonna we're gonna do past the pickup, right? So we're gonna go pick one of our awesome leaders up, and we're gonna just take him for a drive. Stand by for who it is. It's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be fun. Yo, Yo what's, what's up, up, bro? Jen the man. How, How you doing, bro? bro? Oh, fist bump because of oh, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. Sorry. social distancing. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so up, I bro? thought, Yo. you know, for our catch up today, I thought yeah. we might do something a bit different. So we've got Owe to you watching right now. Oh, what's up, guys? Uh, so we're just gonna drive around. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you a couple questions. Sweet. Um, yeah, we'll just hang out, have some fun. Nah, keen, keen for it. It's been a while since we've caught up, bro. I know, I'm bro. excited, bro. It's always good I don't to hang think out we've caught him. up yeah. since Rona happened. Nah, nah, did you, bro? Yeah. Would you consider yourself like a like road rager? Oh, <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah. Um, it depends on the day. Yeah. I think if it's a Monday, mm. then yeah. Because okay. Mondays, yeah, Mondays are like super annoying, bro. I get you, bro. This Monday, actually, I was like driving home from work and yeah. it just seemed like everyone's like, okay, so Rona's not really a big thing anymore, so let's yeah. all go populate the road and let's annoy people. <laughs> but why don't you tell us like when you yeah. and how you first accepted oh, yeah. Jesus into your life, bro? No, nah, that's a great question, bro. I always love hearing that kind of question because like it's part of my story. Yeah. And I think... Um, Actually, the, the night I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, yeah, I um like one like the very first lesson I learned was like was not to be ashamed of my decision. Yeah, wow. Um, you know, it was pretty funny because like my uh, my best mate who I went to youth with, um, because you know like the preacher and the pastor was like, oh, you know, if you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, like why don't you tell some, tell your friend, tell your leader about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so I told my friend. Yeah. And then without my permission, he told our leader. <laughs> and uh, and then our leader told the whole like DG bro. So like my first night there, you know, I haven't met any of the boys. And then uh, bro, they were he all, did you in? Yeah, bro, he did me dirty. But like I'm grateful he did. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, yeah. I learned that like oh, okay like because they were all just like oh nice bro congrats. Yeah. They clapped right. their hands and yeah. I was like oh yeah okay so this is a good decision I made. Yeah legit. You know? So I accepted Jesus around when I was 16. Back in yeah wow. Back in year 11 I was in year yep. 11 and um, got invited to youth. And I was a bit like I was an awkward kid back then. If you if you ever knew me back yeah. then, bro, I was was it was I, 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 I was what I am. I still so, <laughs> don't tell anyone. I'm just, yeah, you're just fine, between man, us. You're fine. <laughs> and yeah, man, I've just um, just been doing youth, doing church, um, doing this whole walk with God, and, and yeah. doing this whole journey. And um, it's been really good. It's been it's been challenging at times as well. Like a lot of yeah, of course. Out of out of my comfort zone, I was really shy back then as well. Yeah. So it's been really good, bro. Like I wouldn't have changed it for anything else that's mad. still the best decision I've ever, I've ever made yeah um and it's, it's actually pretty interesting because um even just having the opportunity to lead like a dg group of guys and just the honor and the privilege it is to to sow in and invest into them like it takes me back to how how my high school experiences was mm. and you know like the kind of pressures i felt or the temptations i felt yeah right and um and even just just what that kind of culture and that kind of world and that all that environment like has to offer. Yeah. And um, and I remember like one of the very first verses I read was Romans twelve two, which talks yeah, about yeah. Um, you know do not conform to the patterns of this world. Yep. I guess like do not conform to the patterns of your school. Yeah. Or yeah something like do, that. Yeah. And you know don't be don't be conformed. Oh, don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be uh, transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. And I remember, I remember thinking like, yeah, wow, like. Um, I may not has have necessarily like done the stuff that all the kids were doing in terms yeah, of yeah. you know what was cool or what was popular or all that kind of stuff, but I did desire it. Mm, I did want yeah, it. Yeah, of course. And I was like, oh, like I remember thinking, like, man, it would actually be pretty cool if I was part of that group because because <laughs> yeah. those, like, those those guys are like the yeah. popular ones. It does look pretty cool. Yeah, too. yeah. like when you're looking at it from the outside in, it's like, yeah, that's like yeah. it would be really nice to have that. Those guys are the man. Yeah, legit. Yeah. And even just like the attention they get. Um, like how the teachers love them, or yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like, oh, GG. And so, um, and but but one thing I remember, I remember declaring like after reading that verse was like, God, like you know, I just accepted you as as my Lord and Savior. Mm. I'm like, like searching up on the internet, what does it mean to be a Christian? And, yeah. And talking to my friends about it, talking to my leaders about it. Yeah. And and really like wanting to be serious about this whole thing. Mm. And I remember thinking like, oh, God, like you know what? I don't care what all the other kids are doing at school. I don't care what 
um, what's cool, what's like popular. Um, really, I just want to follow after you because, because yeah. like, because what I know right now, like, I may not, I may not know much at, at that stage. Yeah. Um, but what I know right now is that, man, like, like I love Jesus and I want to serve Him. Yeah. And I want to follow after Him. And if that means not following after this, or not pursuing, or not conforming, yeah, yeah. to whatever the kids at school is doing. Yeah. Um, then so be it. Yeah. And so it was really like a kind of like a stake in the ground. For That's me. mad, bro. Um, I love I love yeah. Romans twelve too. Yeah, um, definitely. It's probably one of the verses for me that's yeah. kind of like it's a staple, bro. You know, like it's <laughs> that's so true. you know like, a lot of Christians will use it, but like for me, it genuinely is something that it, it is the one of the pillars of my life. Mm. Um, and I love you know right at the end of the verse it says that you would be able to prove what the perfect yeah, will of God is for, for your life. Yeah, yeah. And I think. You know, not only do you prove what the perfect will of God is for your life, mm. but you demonstrate the will of God for other people's yeah, lives. Yeah, when the Bible's talking about be transforming by the renewing of your mind, it's actually the renewing of your heart. Yeah, because well. there's no differentiation okay. in, in uh, biblical text. Yep. It's it's the same thing. Mm. It's yeah, renewing yeah, yeah. of your love for God. It's renewing. So good. And that's and when you are in your Word and you are you are doing the walk with God, you do feel set apart. You don't want to partake uh, in those things. Yeah, I fully get you. It was really like. Like, God changed my perspective on it. Yeah. Like, because my perspective before meeting God was, oh, like, I'm not in this, I'm not in the crowd. Yeah. But I want to be. Yeah. Like, I want to yeah, be yeah. popular. I yeah. want to, like, have a social status kind of thing. Yeah, legit. Um, and then, but when I, when I met God, like, he just shifted my perspective on it. Yeah. And he changed what I thought, how I felt. Oh, crossing. <laughs> You gotta stop for the people, you, you know. People, you don't want to run them over. <laughs> you know, when I was uh, when I was younger, I wanted to be a part of those crowds as yeah, well. Yeah, I right. wanted to be, um, you know, the popular kids. And the same thing, bro. Mm. Like I'd see them; they'd have like a new girlfriend every week, and <laughs> and I wanted to be a part of that because that was the crowd. I didn't necessarily want to be drunk or want to, mm. you know, be in an environment where I could potentially screw up yeah, morally. Right. But mm. it, it was the culture that I wanted to be a part yeah. of. I realized probably when I was in my 20s, mm. you know, the reason I wasn't a part of it is that God actually protected me from that. Yeah, Like, wow. he kept me from that. Because I was still a Christian at that time when I was yeah. going through that stuff. Um, and I probably didn't deal with it as well as I wanted to. Mm. Uh, but that's made me part of who I am now. I actually really love that, hey. Like, it adds so much to it where... Because we may just think like, oh, like, like I want to have influence. Yeah, or I wanna, yeah, legit. I want to speak to these guys about it. Like, why am I not part of the crowd? Even though, like... God probably knows that if we did get part of that crowd, yeah. that we'd like get so influenced by them really instead legit. of the other way around. Yeah, and his his views on us is yeah. greater than than what we can see 100%. for ourselves. And so it's like that whole thing of like fast food tastes good, but it's never good for you. Oh, and they say that, bro. Please don't. Say <laughs> too much. So what's God been talking to you lately, bro? Like what's he been saying? Oh, nothing really. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, really, I've been I've been doing a lot of devotions. Oh and, yeah. Um, yeah, really, just like asking myself, like, okay. Like, I know God's not shocked by all this. Yeah, legit. And, yeah, yeah. and I wonder, like, okay, what's he trying to teach me mm. during this season? Is it, like, a heart attitude? Like, how, how, how am I responding to this? Yep. Like, what opportunities do I have to glorify God through this? Yeah, has true. It, like, has there been opportunities uh, placed on my lap where um, I wouldn't have had if it wasn't for coronavirus? And so really just thinking about that, even thinking about um, going back to my first love with God as well and yeah. going back to the whole um, even just as we're talking now and as I've been sharing about my first experiences coming into to youth and meeting Jesus um, thinking about those times and and re really just reflecting on how good God has been yep. and all the opportunities that, that's come my way Yeah. Um, and it wouldn't have been if you know my friend didn't invite me to youth or if God yeah, didn't leave oh, yeah. me here yeah. and, I, and I even think like that, that the plan that God has for each and every single one of us yeah like it, it won't be fulfilled if we treat, keep trying to conform yeah and try to follow yeah. the crowd so and, good. and try to follow yeah, that's good what point, our bro. friends are doing and mm. so there's got to be a point in your life where you, you, you've got to seek God for yourself and mm. you've got to chase after the call and you've got to yeah. li like learn to listen yeah. on what he's saying and, and where he's leading you and yeah. what the what the next few years look like for you yeah and yeah man but it's uncomfortable eh? Oh, the gospel's 100%. uncomfortable I think youth ministry mm. in general can tend to glamorize the gospel and make yeah, it right. this amazing thing and mm. 
and and you know people look at a youth pastor and think oh man they've got all together and all yeah, that sort of stuff but man like it's is it's that true nope <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first yeah, guys no, I'm under oath no <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I'm there just is as, a sacrifice. Yeah, little, hey, and yeah. I'm just as broken as anyone else, you know. Yeah, like, right, I'm, right, I right. still need the grace. I still need oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's true. I don't. It's not just a. I'm, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey oh, whoa, 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 what was that? But I definitely need His love um, mm. because this journey is just. It's not doable with yeah. without Him, you know. Yeah, it has to be with Him. When I say it's uncomfortable, it means it's going to make people a little bit unpopular every now and then. Yeah. No, um, that's so true. Yeah, because because I even love how Jesus knew what his priorities were. Yeah, and he knew what he valued. Yeah, and even like going back to the whole conformity kind of thing, and being part of you know a high school or like a, like a year group kind of thing, where there there are things that are attractive or what people value. Yeah, and and it, and, it, and 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 it goes so far to say that those things are priorities for them, mm-hmm. where they'll sacrifice you know like the feelings of a friend. Yeah. To, in order to gain popularity, yep. for example. Yeah. And whereas with God, it's like he wasn't concerned with the social status in a sense. He no. wasn't concerned with wanting all all of this. He wasn't concerned about the money and. No. And so, like one thing I loved about it was that Jesus knew the priorities. He knew what was what was the right thing to do. What yeah. was the wrong thing to do, and and yeah, I think that's just like a. And I I I think one way we can figure that out is getting into our word getting into the bible getting into Absolutely. what jesus has said for yeah. us to do as disciples as christians but yeah really as we read the word because because we get a greater understanding of god's heart for us mm. and as we pray as we talk to other believers and and, and the, the other dg boys and girls in our group and our leaders there's a there's a greater understanding of who god is yeah yeah so any final thoughts before i reach your destination I would say, I don't know, like right now, I'm thinking about myself as a 16, 17 year old, yeah, kind of high school, you know, doing this journey with God. And I remember, like, the tension that I felt of like, because um, I was still fairly young, yeah, as well, but I was also quite passionate to see like my school saved and see my friends saved. I suppose the question would be like, how far, like, where's the balance? Where's the line mm. of you know wanting to relate to them, wanting to understand them, yeah. As a, as opposed to the other aspect of it, where it's like, oh no, don't do that. I'm so, I'm super judgmental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just watching you and this and that, and like you shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff. Like for you, like how would like what's some advice that you would give to some of some of our youth? I think um, the love of Jesus has to be the focus. Yeah, um, <clears throat> Jesus has to be the focus because, like, the natural inclination for me, the natural mm. thing for me to do is if I'm better than someone at something, yep. is to call them out on that and go, I'm <laughs> yeah. better than you, look at me, yeah, um, right, I can right. do this better than you. Um, when in actual fact, the kingdom of God doesn't work like that. Mm. Actually, it's an upside down kingdom. Mm. Like the more humble you become, the more mm. God exalts you. Yeah. And so my thing would be, let God point out the good in you. Mm. And that will happen in conversations and opportunities that you have with teachers yep. and students yep. and parents. You know, you'll have moments to talk about the gospel. Mm. And it won't be like a, well, the Bible says this and you're doing it wrong. Yeah. It'll be like a, hey, you know how much God actually loves you. And that's why he says don't do these things. Mm. You know, we're free from sin, not free to sin. Yeah, right. And right. I think um, it's when you point your finger at someone, that's actually a judgment. Mm. And the Bible talks about take the plank of wood out of your own eye before yeah. you go and judge someone else. Yeah. Um, basically saying... Hey, it's actually a sin to judge because that's my call. Mm. I'm the one that judges. Our mission is not to judge but to love. Yeah. We are to righteously guide and 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 provide judgment in decisions mm. and, and in terms of healing people. Um, but God reserves the right to for judgment when it yeah. comes to yeah. sin um, because we're all broken. We're all sin before God, mm. Mm. Um, and His heart that is that all of humanity would be restored. Yeah. And the amazing thing about that is he's chosen to use humanity for that. Mm. So I guess my thing would be make sure that you love Jesus, yeah. make sure that you read in your word, and make sure you talk to people as well. Yeah, like sure. That's got to be the, the key. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, bro. I love that. Yeah. Thanks, bro. That was good hanging out. That hey? was good, bro. Yeah. Right. See you, bro. Right. Catch you later, bro. See you, bro. Take it easy. Later, G. Later, bro. Take it easy, man. Thanks for the chat. Oh, G. 
So we hope you enjoyed that IYTU. to you. Um, Jan is such an amazing guy, and I encourage you, if you don't know him, get to know that guy, because he is a wealth of wisdom. And that was only like a portion of like some of the wisdom that that guy has. He's amazing. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to ask you guys, you know, um, we talked a lot about um, you know, not conforming to the world and, and being set apart and, and, and having that relationship with Jesus. And, you know, you might be watching this tonight and you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Can I say that? That's okay. Like, I'm not here to judge you. Like I said before, you know, my job is not to point out your flaws. Well, hands on the wheel, right? My job is not to point out your flaws. My job is to bring out the God call that he has within your life. Uh, and so part of that is actually accepting Jesus Christ into your life Uh, and I want to lead you in a prayer like that right now Um, I think now is the opportunity and like Jen said he accepted the law when he was 15 16 and that says to me that you are there is no age limit there is no age requirement for the gospel his Bible is still relevant to you his heart is still relevant to you and right now we have an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ the King of Kings into our heart and accept and thank him for what he's done for us. So if that's you, you want to pray, you want prayer right now, why don't you comment in the in the comment section below and say, hey, I need prayer. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to say a prayer together uh, and we're going to believe that as you say this prayer, Jesus Christ is going to come into your heart tonight. He's going to make you, uh, he's going to change you. He's going to transform your life. Uh, and, and we're going to believe that this is the start of something amazing for what God has for your life. So we're going to pray. Ready? It goes like this. Close your eyes. Uh, you know, bow your heads. I'm not going to close my eyes because I'm still driving. Um, but we're going to pray together. Uh, it goes like this. Dear Jesus, thank you that you love me so much that you went to that cross. You paid that ultimate price. You died for me so that I could have new life. Jesus, tonight, I ask you, come into my life, be my Lord, be my Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. Hope you love that I want to you. I loved hanging out with you guys tonight, loved hanging out with Jan, um, and we really hope that this blessed your life. But that's all from me right now. Have an amazing week, and I'll see you in the next one. And now for my next number, I'd like to return to the classics. <laughs>